Deva, Sanskrit, Deva Deva means heavenly, divine, anything of excellence, and is also one of the terms for a deity in Hinduism. Deva is a masculine term, the feminine equivalent is Devi. In the earliest Vedic literature, all supernatural beings are called Devas and Asuras. The concepts and legends evolve in ancient Indian literature, and by the late Vedic period, benevolent supernatural beings are referred to as Deva Asuras. In post-Vedic texts, such as the Puranas and the Ithihasas of Hinduism, the Devas represent the good, and the Asuras the bad. In some medieval Indian literature, devas are also referred to as suras and contrasted with their equally powerful but malevolent half-brothers, referred to as the asuras devas, along with asuras, yakshas nature spirits and rakshasas ghosts, ogres are part of Indian mythology, and devas feature in one of many cosmological theories in Hinduism. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> Deva is a Sanskrit word found in Vedic literature of 2nd millennium BCE. Monier Williams translates it as, "...heavenly, divine, terrestrial things of high excellence, exalted, shining ones." The concept also is used to refer to deity or god. The Sanskrit deva derives from Indo Iranian asterisk daiv, which in turn descends from the Proto Indo European word, asterisk daiwo, originally an adjective meaning, celestial, or shining. Which is a not synchronic Sanskrit vrddhi derivative from the root asterisk diw meaning to shine, especially as the day lit sky. The feminine form of asterisk diwos is asterisk diwa too, which descends into Indic languages as Devi, in that context meaning female deity. Also deriving from asterisk diwos, and thus cognates of Deva, are Lithuanian Dievas, Latvian Deves, Prussian Dewas, Germanic Tawas, seen in English, Tuesday and the related Old Norse Tivar gods, and Latin Deus God, and Divus divine, from which the English words divine, deity, French, Dieu, Portuguese, Deus, Spanish, Dios, and Italian, Dio, also, Zes, d Dios, d the Greek father of the gods, are derived. It is related to asterisk Dias which while from the same root, may originally have referred to the heavenly shining father, and hence to father sky, the chief god of the Indo-European pantheon, continued in Sanskrit Dias. The boat of the Devas is Dialoka, according to Douglas Harper, the etymological roots of Deva mean, a shining one, from asterisk div, to shine, and it is a cognate with Greek Dios, divine, and Zeus, and Latin Deus, god. Old Latin divos, diva is masculine, and the related feminine equivalent is devi. Etymologically, the cognates of devi are Latin dia and Greek thea. When capitalized, devi or mata refers to goddess as divine mother in Hinduism. Deva is also referred to as devata, while devi is devika. The word deva is also a proper name or part of name in Indian culture, where it refers to one who wishes to excel, overcome, or the Seeker of, master of or a best among. Topic. Vedic literature Topic. Samhitas and Brahmanas The Samhitas, which are the oldest layer of text in Vedas enumerate 33 Devas, either 11 each for the three worlds, or as 12 Adityas, 11 Rudras, 8 Vasus and 2 Asvans in the Brahmanas layer of Vedic texts. The Rigveda states in hymn 1.139.11 Some Devas represent the forces of nature and some represent moral values such as the Adityas, Varuna, and Mitra, each symbolizing the epitome of a specialized knowledge, creative energy, exalted and magical powers The most referred to Devas in the Rig Veda are Indra, Agni fire, and Soma, with fire deity. Called the friend of all humanity, it and Soma being the two celebrated in a yajna fire ritual that marks major Hindu ceremonies. Savitar, Vishnu, Rudra later given the exclusive epithet of Shiva, and Prajapati later Brahma are gods and hence devas. Saraswati knowledge and Lakshmi wealth are some devas or goddesses. Many of the deities taken together are worshipped as the Vishvadevas. Topic. Important devas. Shiva the destroyer Brahma the creator Vishnu the preserver Ganesha the god of beginning 
Hanuman the god of protector and bhakti Kartikeya the god of wars Narada the god of news Vishvakarma the god of architect Danvantari the god of doctors and Ayurveda Kubera the god of wealth Dias the god of sky Vayu the god of wind Varuna the god of water Agni the god of fire Samudra the god of sea Kamadeva the god of love Baryadeva the god of diseases Chitradeva the god of art Indra the king of gods and rain Surya the god of sun and light Chandra the god of moon and night Mangala the god of Mars Buddha the god of Mercury Brihaspati the god of Jupiter and teacher of gods Gyan. Shukra the god of Venus and worship Bhakti. Shani the god of Saturn and deeds Karma. Rahu the god of Neptune Ketu the god of Uranus Yamaraha the god of Pluto and death and one of the Shivagana Henotheism <inaudible> <inaudible> In Vedic literature, Deva is not a monotheistic god, rather a supernatural, divine concept manifesting in various ideas and knowledge, in a form that combine excellence in some aspects, wrestling with weakness and questions in other aspects, heroic in their outlook and actions, yet tied up with emotions and desires. Max Muller states that the Vedic hymns are remarkable in calling every single of different devas as the only one, the supreme, the greatest. Muller concluded that the Vedic ideas about devas is best understood neither as polytheism nor as monotheism, but as henotheism where gods are equivalent, different perspective, different aspects of reverence and spirituality, unified by principles of urta and dharma. <laughs> <laughs> Characteristics of devas in the Vedic literature Ananda Kumaraswamy states that devas and asuras in the Vedic lore are similar to the Olympian gods and titans of Greek mythology. Both are powerful but have different orientations and inclinations, with the devas representing the powers of light and the asuras representing the powers of darkness in Hindu mythology. According to Kumaraswamy's interpretation of devas and asuras, both these natures exist in each human being, both the tyrant and the angel. The best and the worst within each person struggles before choices and one's own nature, and the Hindu formulation of devas and asuras is an eternal dance between these within each person. The devas and asuras, angels and titans, powers of light and powers of darkness in Rigveda, although distinct and opposite in operation, are in essence consubstantial, their distinction being a matter not of essence but of orientation, revolution or transformation. In this case, the titan is potentially an angel, the angel still by nature a titan, the darkness in Actu is light, the light in potentia darkness, whence the designations Asura and Deva may be applied to one and the same person according to the mode of operation, as in Rigveda 1.163.3, Trita art thou Agni by interior operation. All powerful beings, good or evil, are called Devas and Asuras in the oldest layer of Vedic texts. A much studied hymn of the Rigveda states Devav Asura, Asuras who have become Devas, and contrasts it with Asura Adeva, Asuras who are not Devas. They are born from the same father, Prajapati, the primordial progenitor, his sons are envisioned as the Asuras and Devas. They all share the same residence, Loka, eat together the same food and drinks, Soma, and have innate potential, knowledge, and special powers in Hindu mythology. The only thing that distinguishes Asura who become Deva from Asura who remain Asura, is intent, action and choices they make in their mythic lives. <inaudible> Upanishads The oldest Upanishads mention Devas, and their struggle with the Asuras. The Kashataki Upanishad, for example, in Book 4 states that, Indra was weaker than the Asuras when he did not know his own Atman soul, self. Once Indra had self-knowledge, he became independent, sovereign and victorious over the Asuras. Similarly, states Kashataki Upanishad, "...the man who knows his inner self gains independence, sovereignty and is unaffected by all evil." Chandogya Upanishad, in Chapter 1.2, describes the battle between Devas and Asuras on various sensory powers. 
This battle between good and evil fails to produce a victor and simply manifests itself in the perceived universe, as good or evil sights witnessed by beings, as good or evil words shared between people, as good or evil smells of nature, as good or evil feelings experienced, as good or evil thoughts within each person. Finally, the Deva Asura battle targets the soul, where Asuras fail and Devas succeed, because soul force is serene and inherently good, asserts Chandogya Upanishad. Chapter 3.5.2 of the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad describes Devas, men, and Asuras as sons of Prajapati, the primordial father. Each asks for a lesson on ethics. Prajapati tells the Devas to observe the virtue of temperance self-restraint, Dhamma, the men to observe the virtue of charity Dana, and Asuras to observe the virtue of compassion Daya. At the end of the chapter, the Upanishad declares that these are three cardinal virtues that should always be observed by all Devas, men and Asuras, medieval-era Indian scholars, in their Basya review and commentaries on the Upanishads, stated that the discussion of Devas and Asuras in the Upanishads is symbolic, and it represents the good and evil that resides and struggles within each human being. Adi Shankara, for example, in his commentary on Brihadaranyaka Upanishad asserted that Devas represent the human seeking for the sacred and spiritual, while the Asuras represent the human seeking for the worldly excesses. Edelman and other modern era scholars also state that the Devas versus Asuras discussion in Upanishads is a form of symbolism. In the later primary Upanishadic texts, Devas and Asuras discuss and act to seek knowledge, for different purposes. In one case, for example, they go to Prajapati, their father, to understand what is self atman, soul, and how to realize it. The first answer that Prajapati gives is simplistic, which the Asuras accept and leave with, but the Devas led by Indra do not accept and question because Indra finds that he hasn't grasped its full significance and the given answer has inconsistencies. Edelman states that this symbolism embedded in the Upanishads is a reminder that one must struggle with presented ideas, learning as a process, and Deva nature emerges with effort. <laughs> Puranas and Ithihasas In the Puranas and the Ithihasas with the embedded Bhagavad Gita, the Devas represent the good, and the Asuras the bad. According to the Bhagavad Gita 16 .6 .7, all beings in the universe have both the divine qualities Divi Sampad and the demonic qualities Asori Sampad within each. The 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita states that pure godlike saints are rare and pure demon-like evil are rare among human beings, and the bulk of humanity is multi-charactered with a few or many faults. According to Janine Fowler, the Gita states that desires, aversions, greed, needs, emotions in various forms, are facets of ordinary lives, and it is only when they turn to lust, hate, cravings, arrogance, conceit, anger, harshness, hypocrisy, violence, cruelty and such negativity and destruction inclined that natural human inclinations metamorphose into something demonic asura. .Everyone starts as an asura in Hindu mythology, born of the same father. Asuras who remain Asura share the character of powerful beings obsessed with their craving for more power, more wealth, ego, anger, unprincipled nature, force and violence. The Asuras who become Devas, in contrast are driven by an inner voice, seek understanding and meaning, prefer moderation, principled behavior, morals, knowledge and harmony. The hostility between the two is the source of extensive legends and tales in the Puranic and the epic literature of Hinduism, however, many texts discuss their hostility in neutral terms and without explicit condemnation. Some of these tales are the basis for myths behind major Hindu festivals, such as the story of Asura Ravana and Deva Rama in the Ramayana and the legend of Asura Haranyakashipu and Deva Vishnu as Narasimha, the latter celebrated with the Hindu spring festival of Holika and Holi. Topic. Bhagavata Purana In Bhagavata Purana, Brahma had ten sons, Marichi, Atri, Angira, Palastya, Palaha, Kratu, Vasistha, Daksa, Narada. Marichi had a son called Kasyapa. Kasyapa had thirteen wives, Aditi, Didi, Danu, Kadru etc. The sons of Aditi are called Adityas, the sons of Didi are called Daityas, and the sons of Danu are called Danavas. Burhaspati Jupiter, son of Angiris, is a guru of Devas Vedic gods. Shukracharya Venus, son of Brigu, is a guru of Asuras Vedic demons or, and Danavas. Topic Symbolism Edelman states that the dichotomies present in the Puranas literature of Hinduism are symbolism for spiritual concepts. 
For example, God Indra a diva and the anti-god Vairakana and Asura question a sage for insights into the knowledge of the self. Vairakana leaves with the first given answer, believing now he can use the knowledge as a weapon. In contrast, Indra keeps pressing the sage, churning the ideas, and learning about means to inner happiness and power. Edelman suggests that the Deva Asura dichotomies in Hindu mythology may be seen as narrative depictions of tendencies within ourselves. The god Deva and anti god Asura, states Edelman, are also symbolically the contradictory forces that motivate each individual and people, and thus Deva Asura dichotomy is a spiritual concept rather than mere genealogical category or species of being. In the Bhagavata Purana, saints and gods are born in families of asuras, such as Mahabali and Prahlada, conveying the symbolism that motivations, beliefs and actions rather than one's birth and family circumstances define whether one is diva-like or asura-like. Classical Hinduism Nature devas are responsible for elements or objects such as fire, air, rain and trees, most of them assumed a minor role in the later religion. Certain other deities rose into prominence. These higher devas control much more intricate tasks governing the functioning of the cosmos and the evolution of creation. The Trimurti is composed of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Note, Mahadeva generally refers to Shiva. There are also many other lesser celestial beings in Hinduism, such as the Gandharvas male celestial musicians and the Asparas female celestial dancers. The musicians and dancers are married to each other. Vayu, the lord of the wind, Varuna, the lord of water, Agni, the lord of fire, are an example of an important diva. Devas, in Hinduism, are celestial beings that control forces of nature such as fire, air, wind, etc. Topic Sangam literature Sangam literature of Tamil 300 BC to 300 CE describes the offerings for devas. In Silapathakaram one of the five epics of Tamil by Ilango Adigal saying the offering for four kind of devas. Topic see also topic Notes topic References topic Further reading The Basic Concept of Vedic Religion F. B. J. Kuiper 1975, History of Religions, Vol. 15, No. 2, pages 107-120 On Roots of Devas and Asuras The proto indorians T. Burrow 1973, Journal of the Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland, Vol. 105, Issue 2, pages 123-140 On Roots of Devas and Asuras in Indo-Iranian versus Indo-European history, Indo-European deities and the Rigveda N. D. Kazanis, 2001, The Journal of Indo-European Studies, Volume 29, Number 3 and 4, The Vedic Gods of Japan, S. K. A. K., 2004, Brahmavidya, The Ajar Library Bulletin on the spread of Vedic devas such as Indra, Agni, Vayu outside India, on translation, Maya, Deva, Tapas, Ananda Kumaraswamy, Isis, Volume 19, Number 1, Pages 74 to 91, on all. Alternate meanings of devas, ritual, knowledge, and being, initiation, and Veda study in ancient India. Brian K. Smith, 1986, Newman, Volume 33, FASC, 1, pages 65 to 89, on the role of knowledge in empowering the diva nature in man. 